What's up guys, it's Andrew on Tech here. Um, I wanted to give a quick tutorial today on how to clean a GPU. Um, specifically, I have, let's see, what is this? This is a GTX 780 classified. And I've had this running in a system for quite a bit. And I've noticed some of the thermals have gone up a little bit more than when it was when I uh, when I first got it. And I'm thinking maybe I should give it a clean. You can see possibly some dust in there in the heatsink, but um, but either way, uh, I had some questions around this from some of my friends, so I thought some people would like to see this. Um, this is actually going to be my first time ever doing a classified edition cooler. Um, I hope that it is not too difficult to take off of the PCB, but um, I'm sure we'll see. What's crazy about this card is just how big it is. I actually have a GTX 970 right here, and you can see how much bigger this 780 classified is. Um, not only is it much longer and wider, but it is just huge. It's way heavier. It's crazy. So. Anyways, I'm going to put this back over there. I don't need that right now. Um, okay, so first thing you want to do is uh, you want to find on the bottom these four screws right here. Um, these are the four screws that are the screws that are holding this cooler on top of it. Um, most GPUs are going to be the same. Like if we look at the 970, granted this is also from EVGA, but um, if we look at this 970 as well, you'll see the same four screws that I'm talking about. And those four screws are effectively right around where the, um, the actual GPU chip is. So, um, so some of the other stuff that uh, you'll need for this is a screwdriver, um, preferably with, uh, with, you know, I'm using one with several different bits, but a general uh, Phillips screwdriver will work for this. Um, also, a can of compressed air. I um, mean, get these. Obviously, I bought this. Let's see, our Office Depot. Um, but you can find those pretty much anywhere. That'll be used to uh, to spray some some compressed air into the uh, fins of the heatsink in order to get some of that dust out. Um, let's see here. What else? Um, some. Then once you get the cooler off, you're gonna have some thermal paste stuck on the uh, on the GPU itself. So you'll need some isopropyl alcohol and I'm using uh, toilet paper. You can use pretty much anything. I know some people use coffee filters um, and some other things in order to get that off. So, all right, let's let's uh, let's start taking this bad boy off. Um. So usually I take uh, the screws on the bottom off in more of a cross pattern. Uh, it really doesn't matter that much on this type of thing, but especially when you're tightening, it can you can possibly bend something if it's you know much more flimsy. Now this cooler is going to be super thick, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, also, what's interesting is that the screws. If you've never seen the screws on a lot of heat sinks, um, they actually have a spring, which is kind of hard to see possibly, but they have a spring that allows you to pretty much prevents you from over tightening, which is cool. So now that I have those screws off, in theory, I should be able to just pull this off. As you can see, it's already starting to come apart. Um, again, like I said, this is a weird, oh, so you can see now, since this is a different um, cooler style and a bigger card, there's actually another screw Well, that was easy. So yeah, so you can see once you actually remove all the screws that you need to remove, this entire heat sink, which for this GPU is massive, comes right off. Um, so you can see this is the actual GPU itself, the PCB board, and then this is the actual GPU. Now, unlike a CPU, um, you can actually see that the thermal compound is designed to actually overflow a little bit down over it. So unlike a CPU where you only need to put a little pea size, I actually recommend when we reapply this later to apply much more to it. But the next step is quite simple actually, which is we want to clean all the thermal compound that was currently on it off of it. 
and trying to simultaneously not lose a bunch of screws. So again, I'm using isopropyl alcohol, 91%. Pretty much any percentage works, but I usually just go for whatever's the highest I can get. And you'll see if it's an old card, well not old, but a card that's been used a lot like this, it'll actually usually just clump up just like that and become almost like, like chewed gum um, in consistency. So you can get that off there pretty easily. Throw this away. Grab some more. Because you really want to get that clean. Um, so that way none of this old compound is left over when we reapply. So yeah, you can see now with this off, you can really look and see where there might be some dust. This is actually surprisingly for being used for almost, I think three years now um, on a pretty much consistent basis. This is actually really, really clean. Like I barely have to probably blow much, much air in here at all. But um, so I see some, some right here. Oops. Of course, my uh, my nozzle came out. There we go. But yeah, there's <laughs> this card is actually really really clean. I am surprised. Um, now, what's cool about this card is you can tell that this classified card is quite high end. Obviously, the, the much larger PCB is, is giving it away, but also the fact that this almost like a thermal plate is on top of most of the PCB is actually usually not there, at least in my experience with some of the cards that I've taken apart. Usually just once the cooler comes off, it's just PCB right there. So that's kind of neat to, uh, to see. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty clean in terms of like for a GPU. I mean, there's some, there might be some dust around here, but for the most part, this is extremely clean. So something I didn't mention when I took this off that I, I did and I know I didn't speak on is there's actually a power connector for those fans right here um, that connects to the PCB right here. Now, when I was prying that apart earlier, so when it was like this and I was prying it apart, I actually just used my hand and just went and pinched that off. Um, I just forgot to mention it, so I wanted to mention it now. So in case you get a situation where you're trying to pull it off and it just won't come off, um, yeah, check that. I believe, let me see on this. Oh yeah, so you can see on this uh, 970 um, that hasn't had it pulled off yet, you can see right there is that fan connector. So when you're pulling it off, just take your finger in there, Snap it, it should come right off. Um, and then reattach it obviously when you put the uh, put the cooler back on, so. I'm gonna grab a little bit more isopropyl alcohol real quick and clean up the actual GPU itself. Yeah, this one has quite a bit more gunk on it. It's not coming off as easy. Just takes a little more time. You know, just like anything computer related, don't rush. Give it, give it a decent amount of time to, uh, to do whatever job that you're doing so that way you don't make a mistake. Might have a little bit of particles left over from this toilet paper, so just give it a quick spray. It'll also help dry out any of the uh, 
the alcohol that's left on it. Okay, so now, as you can see, our GPU chip is nice and clean, shiny, looks great. Let's see, what does it say on it? Yeah, it just says NVIDIA Taiwan, nothing too fancy. So yeah, I mean, you can, you can actually see how small GPUs are without their cooler, which is pretty crazy. Um, or at least how thin they are. Um, this one is actually quite large in terms of the actual space it takes up, but quite interesting. So with that done, uh, pretty much you just want to confirm that your, uh, your um, cooler is clean as well. And then you just want to apply some new thermal paste. So now, what I mentioned before was, unlike a CPU cooler, when you apply the thermal paste, um, on a CPU cooler generally, it's said to either you know, do a stripe or, or a pea size. So on a GPU, you need a little bit more thermal paste. So I actually recommend doing more of kind of like a, almost like an X pattern. So I'll put a little bit. Going with the other side of the X. Oh no. Well, looking like I'm getting to the end of this tube of thermal paste. Let's try to get as much as I can out of this tube. Hopefully, I have another tube somewhere. So yeah, so something kind of like that. So you can kind of see, it's a lot more than you would normally put on a chip, but like I said, these GPUs need a little bit more paste, because unlike a CPU, so a CPU, you have the diode in the center of you know your visual CPU. Um, actually, let me grab, I can grab a CPU so we can, I can talk about this a little bit better. <clears throat> So if we look at, maybe I forgot how to open this. So if you look at a CPU, like so, you'll see something along the lines of this, okay? So on the CPU, the actual diode itself, the thing producing all the heat, um, is in the center and does not take up this entire thing. This is a heat spreader that's on top of it to help well, you know, spread the heat and, and make cooling a little bit more effective. Now, on a GPU, that entire thing is the diode. So because of that, the entire thing needs covered versus on a CPU, you can get away with having just mostly the center covered. So, so that is why we, we go with a little more thermal paste. Uh, but yeah, now that the thermal paste is on there, you just kind of want to line things up like it was before. And then you also want to figure out where your fan header was. You want to get that plugged back in. So sometimes they're kind of small, like right now. Um, the cable's not very long, which makes it a little bit more difficult. So if you take a flathead screwdriver, you can actually just press it in. Let me see if I can try to get this on camera. Um, so you can see it's the cable's really short, so it's not the easiest thing to get in there. So if you actually just guide it in with a flathead screwdriver, you can just get it boop, pop in there really nice. So that wasn't too bad. So now that's on, you kind of just want to confirm that it's on there nice and sturdy, which it is. You can you can usually kind of slide it a little bit and see uh, see if it moves, and if it doesn't move, you should be good. Then uh, set that back down grab our screws um, yeah and we're going to uh, uh, screw this back in
So yeah, like I was saying before, when you screw in um, this part right here, you actually want to do in like a cross pattern. Just to be safe, to not apply too much tension to one, one side or the other. So I usually go about, mm, probably about 80% tightness. Oops, maybe if I get it started. Um, I usually go about 80% tightness on the first, the first round. And then once I get all four in on a cross pattern with 80% tightness, then I'll go back and tighten them all to 100%. Um, mainly I just, I, I don't want to take any risks about bending, bending the PCB or, you know, applying too much pressure in one area. So this is an easy way to just help prevent that. So now, yeah, now I'm just tightening that last little bit. And voila, good as new. So if your GPU is a little bit older, then most likely you're gonna benefit more from this. This one actually didn't seem too bad, which is quite interesting based on how much I use this. Um, but if your GPU is getting overheated or you can just clearly see that there's a bunch of dust and whatnot going on, um, I recommend, yeah, trying to uh, open it up, clean it out and apply new thermal paste. So. That's it for today. Um, if you guys liked the video, put a thumbs up on it. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. Put any comments if you want suggestions for new video topics or uh, anything you want to see different in the future. All right, thanks for watching.